Hey everybody, welcome to Vintage Variety. If you're new to my channel, please subscribe and as always, please give me a thumbs up. Today's content is going to be vintage jewelry identification for Napier jewelry. I'll be giving you some history and background information about this company, along with tips for identifying and determining the age of their pieces of jewelry. I'll also be sharing some pieces from my own personal collection, including some book pieces. Start out today's content talking a little bit about the book on Napier Jewelry. This is the book that I own. I bought this a while back off of Amazon. This book was written by Melinda L. Lewis with Henry Swin. This book has tons of information about Napier. It has the background information and the history on the company. It's also kind of divided up by the different decades and time periods. They show a lot of different pieces of the Napier jewelry, and they also show other pieces that this company made. This company did not just make jewelry, they made a lot of different items. This book is over 1,000 pages, and it is a beast. It weighs a ton, but it is packed full of info. If this is a book that you are interested in owning, I highly recommend it. A lot of the information I will be sharing with you today came from this book, and some of the information is research that I've done on my own. The Napier Jewelry Company was established in 1878 in Massachusetts. The company's original name was E.A. Bliss & Company, and they manufactured men's watch chains. In 1920, James H. Napier became president of the company, and the name changed to Napier Bliss. In 1922, Bliss was dropped from the company's name, and it became known solely as Napier. James Napier worked at the company from 1914 until 1960, becoming its president, as mentioned earlier, in 1920. In 1999, the company was sold to Victoria & Co. Napier jewelry is still manufactured today under the Jones Apparel Group. The pieces that you will find today will not be signed. They're only signed on the cards or the packaging that they come on. Now I'm gonna talk a little bit about how to identify pieces. This is a double hole tag and it's Napier in block letters and this was used in the 1920s and 1930s. Here you can see another example of that. This one was called a Napier neck brace tag and you'll notice that the Napier is in script. This mark was used on pieces in the 1980s and the 1990s. Here's another mark that was on their pieces of jewelry. You can see that it's Napier and the words circle around the trademark. This was used in the 1960s and 1970s. Here we have a Napier mark in script and this is from 1981. Here is another one in script and this is from post 1981. Here is another one and this is Napier in large block letters with the trademark behind it. This is used in 1996. This is an example of the Napier in script. The copyright mark is in front of it, and this was used in the 1990s. Here's another example. This is Napier in block letters with the trademark behind it. And this was used post-1996. And this is Napier on the oval trademark hang tag. You'll notice that it has the block letters. This was used in the 1950s and 1960s. So now I'm going to kind of give you a summary of all of that information. One of the earliest marks that the company used was the word Napier inside of a cartouche. And that was in 1920. In 1922, the company began signing its pieces with block letters. And they signed their pieces this way all throughout their history. Sometime in the 80s or 90s, the company began using the script lettering. That's where things get a little bit confusing because in some of my research that I've done on the internet, it states on a lot of different websites that the script lettering was used sometime in the 2000s after the company was sold to Victoria & Co. However, if you look in the book, it shows pieces that are signed with the script lettering that were manufactured in the 80s and 90s. My guess is that they started using script lettering sometime in the 80s and 90s, just by looking at the book and what it shows. It does give you a pretty good idea when you're looking at the way pieces are signed, because if it's the script lettering, you're gonna know 
that those pieces are most likely from the 80s and 90s. Victoria & Co. did go out of business and another company purchased Napier. So the jewelry is still manufactured today under the Jones Apparel Group. And the pieces that you run across today, they will not be stamped with the name Napier. For example, if they come on a card or in a box, the name Napier will be stamped on the packaging. Another good tip on identifying pieces of Napier jewelry is to look at the materials, the overall design or style of the piece. Of course, pieces made during the Art Deco era are going to look Art Deco. If you're a collector and you're really interested in collecting these pieces of jewelry and identifying the times that they came from or the decades that they came from, the book is gonna be your best resource because it breaks all of the different designs and the decades up. They have tons of pictures that you can use to compare your pieces to, to get a better idea of when they're made. I highly recommend that you buy the book if this is a jewelry brand that you're really interested in collecting. Now I'm gonna share some of my book pieces with you. This first piece that you see here, I believe was made sometime between the 80s and the 90s. This is a similar piece in the book. And this piece has a value of between $55 and $75. This other piece that you see here, there are also some similar pieces in the book that I'll show you. These pieces are also from the 80s and the 90s. It doesn't give a specific value on these pieces. And you can see these pieces are signed with the script marking. And you will see there's some pearls. And I do have a necklace similar to this that I believe is a Napier, but I'm unable to locate it right now. I have a ton of jewelry laid out on my dining room table in order to do this content. Seem to have misplaced this one, but I will show you guys another pearl necklace that is a Napier. And that is this one. You can see it has the little gold beads. And there's the script marking on this one. So this was probably manufactured in the 80s and 90s also. This is a book piece from the 80s and 90s. And I own two of these. I'll show you both of them. The first one is a lot larger. Got it laid out here so you can see. And this is the second one. You can tell that these pieces are almost identical. This one has more beads on it and it's smaller, whereas this one has fewer beads and it's larger. The largest one is a book piece, as you can see here. It was made in 1985. The gold beads on this necklace are brass and they're gold plated. And this necklace has a value between $45 and $65. It's from the Spectacular Collection. They also had earrings that went with this, and I have the matching earrings, but they don't look like this. Whereas these earrings have two little discs and they're clip-ons, the earrings that I own have only one disc and they're post earrings. And these earrings are valued between $25 and $35. And I will also post a picture of the earrings that I own for you guys to see. And again, you can see the script with the copyright mark on this smaller necklace. And the same script is on the larger necklace. I will eventually be listing the smaller necklace on eBay sometime in the future. Here I have three brooches that are also Napier. All of these are signed. You can see this one has the script lettering. This one is done in the block letters. And then we have this one, and this is my favorite of all of them. And it also has the script lettering. And this is a pair of earrings. These are clip-on. And you can see that these have the block lettering also. These I didn't see in the book. I'm not saying they're not in there. There's so many pictures in this book, it's hard to tell. 
This necklace is another book piece. The book piece is done in a gold tone, and this is from 1990 between 2000. It's from the Vanity Fair collection. And this is the book piece. This is valued between $65 and $95. My guess is $95 would be if you had the earrings that went along with it. And of course, it would have to be in pristine condition. So I would guess that perhaps this one's probably valued at around $65. And that's the signature on this piece. This is another silver tone piece from my collection of Napier. This necklace is made up of lots of different little silver links and you can see that it has a smooth link and a textured link. And this piece has the block lettering. This is the last piece that I'm going to show today. This is a chain necklace and it's also done in a silver tone. And this one's older also. You can see the block lettering marks on it. And it is adjustable. is a great book and I highly recommend it if you're a collector. It will assist you in identifying the pieces of their jewelry and it's also very informative if you're interested in the history about the company. I hope this information has been informative and if you're a collector that it will help you. I want to thank you for taking time out of your day to share these treasures with me. If you haven't already, please like, subscribe, and ring the bell for notifications on more videos about collecting vintage and antique items. Thank you again for watching, and I hope you all have a wonderful day.